Welcome to World at Work TV. I'm Allison Avalos, and I'm joined today by Bonnie Schindler and Sue Schroeder from Vivian Consulting. And we're talking about incentive pay practice data pulled from the recently published World at Work and Vivian Consulting survey. We've conducted this survey for a few years on private companies, and for the first time this year, we did three simultaneous surveys looking at three different sectors. But for this conversation, let's start by talking about private companies. So Bonnie, this is the third time that we've gathered data on private companies and incentive pay practices. What types of trends are we seeing emerging? Yeah, well, the first time we conducted the survey was in 2007, and at that time, long-term incentives were not prevalent. They were only offered by about a third of companies. But through the years, we've seen the prevalence of both short-term incentives and long-term incentives increase. Now, nearly all private companies use short-term incentives, and over half use um, long-term incentives. And we've seen some stability when I think about the variety of surveys that we've conducted that variable pay has been pretty prominent, but the use of incentives increasing over time has been something that's kind of been uh, evident in the recent findings. So how do organizations do short-term incentives? Yes, yeah, so what we did was we looked at this question in 2007 and then again in 2011 and then again just recently in, at the end of 2013. And so what we saw there is that short-term incentives are for pay typically for a year, less year or less than a year is the, is the pay period for that. We surveyed a lot of different types of short-term um, incentives, such as the AIP, which is the annual, annual incentive plan, uh, discretionary bonus plans, uh, SPOT, bonus awards and also retention bonus uh, awards. Those were the ones that we saw were the most prevalent for the private companies. The other thing that we saw a lot in 2013 that was different than the other years was that the number of plans have um, increased. So only about a quarter of the companies now just only have one plan and uh, quite a large have actually over more than four plans. So the number of plans have really increased. The main one still is the annual incentive plan where 86% of companies offer that. So Bonnie, what does a typical annual incentive plan look like at companies today? Well, the typical annual incentive plan is offered to employees at the exempt salaried level and above. So um, exempt salaried employees right up through the top executives and the chief executive officer, the CEO. In terms of the performance measures, we see that private companies typically use one to three measures, so they're trying to keep things simple and really focus on key short-term objectives for the organization. And um, with regard to the types of performance measures used, we see them favor financial over individual objectives and operational objectives. The two most prevalent categories of the financial objectives that we saw were profitability measures, so things like net income, operating income, um, EBIT, which is earnings before interest and taxes. And we also saw a lot of companies using revenue measures. It was about 80% um, use the profitability measures and 56% use revenue measures. So what we really see is they're emphasizing both profitability and growth. Um, in their short-term incentive plans. So is that what you expected to see in the data? It is what we expected to see. It's a pretty typical combination of performance measures for for-profit companies, whether public or private. So Sue, if we shift and look at long-term incentives, what's that typical long-term incentive package looking like today? Yeah, so the long-term incentive would be for performance greater than a one-year period, typically around a three-year period or so of time. And so there, uh, examples would be a cash long-term incentive plan, restricted stock, stock options. Those are typical vehicles. And it's very tricky for private companies to have long-term incentives. But we've seen about 60% of companies do offer uh, that uh, primarily to the CEO and the other officers, uh, so more of the top level of the company. But they really need that to, um, to motivate and retain and also to recruit these executives from the public companies who offer these types of incentives. And primarily, the private companies are going to be doing the cash long-term incentive plans. Those were the most prevalent vehicle that we found um, in our survey. Now, some uh, survey participants did also use real equity. 
and those would tend to use both vehicles, restricted stock and stock options. So once they made the commitment to do the, the real equity plans, then they would offer two vehicles to accomplish that. Okay, so for those private companies using real equity, how do they handle some of the complexities like valuation and liquidity? Bonnie? Yes, and that's something um, the private companies obviously use the equity a lot less because it is a lot more complicated and expensive for the private companies. So in terms of valuation, what we find is that they do turn to an outside independent advisor to um, provide an opinion on the value of the equity. And the types of firms that would do this would be either an investment bank or one of the large accounting firms. In terms of cashing out the incentives, generally we see um, the private companies linking the real equity to some sort of value realizing event. And by that we mean um, it could be an, um, an initial public offering or IPO or it could be a sale of the company. So that it really motivates the executives to stay for the long haul and then if there's a cash out event that's when you really realize all of the income. Thank you both for your insights. We hope you'll look for a related video where we talk about data from nonprofits and government agencies. For World at Work, I'm Allison Avalos.